Boy, you won't be able to touch me. You ain't never fought a 135 in your life. You too ugly to be champ. I'm oh, fucking champ. <laughs> can you fight this nigga talking mad shit, man? We fighting next. We fighting next. Let's go. Oh. Let's go. Hey everybody, I'm Jeremy Piven. And I'm Mike Tyson. We are here at Hot Boxing with King Ryan. No shit. Ryan man, Garcia. Man. How you doing, man? Doing good. good. I know when, when you have the opportunity to walk down the street, people must say, hey, I saw your fight. Yeah, there's a lot of that going on, definitely. Yeah. Um, I'm just so blessed to be here, first of all. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Jeremy, to have me You know, here. No problem, brother. And um, yeah, that fight was a great moment. It was... Um, it was a chance to show people who I really am. And I think um, that fight just, to me, it meant to like, to let people know, you know, you're not who people tell you are. You know, you're not a piece of shit. You're not a bum. You're not anything. You're not a social media star. You're who you choose to be. You know what I mean? Like, Did you think yeah. that about yourself? No. No, no. I, no, I didn't. You know what? You know what? You know what it was? It was, it was having that moment and like, can I pull it off? Like, if that moment comes and I get to show who I am, can mm -hmm. I ask, like, what I believe, what, you know, can I Do pull it Do you think through? because you got knocked down that and got up in one that shows who you were? I think to the people it does. character? I think to the people it does. I think to myself, I kind of knew I had that in me, and that's why I was able to do it, but to the people it definitely showed who I really am. Yeah, that was a wonderful um, victory, too. Thank you, man. Thank you. Huh? I saw you throwing those hard shots before you entered the ring and it was a trip you know it was almost like you knew well you tell me man i don't want to speak for you did you know you wanted to prove your power in this fight uh i definitely prepared myself to you know keep throwing those blows as hard as i can you know as many times as i can if i have to yeah you throw a real bad intention yeah which is cool. yeah i like to i like the AR. yeah keep going yeah yeah to Man. tell me how I'm close with um, De Devin Haney. What do you think about him? Is he in your future? Definitely, he's in my future. Um, of all those fights I want. Who do you want to fight? Tank Davis. You know right that. Now, today. <laughs> Two rounds is you all going to fight. Take. Tank, Tank Davis. Tank Davis. Davis. Tank Davis. Tank Davis. Where are you, Tank? I, Tank, I did an interview with Tank too, and Tank mm -hmm. think he's ready. He's ready. Yeah, but I'm ready. I'm really? more ready. You really want him? That's. I, I see it. Second round knockout. Calling it right here. Man, I'm gonna sit up straight because I need to take it to yeah. go. I don't want him to see What's me. What's his slouch. name again? Tell me his name. I don't. You can call him whatever you want. All right. To me, Javante Tank, you call him whatever you want. You can All make right. him seem like the baddest creature on the planet. Just know. I want you, two Tank. Rounds. I can't believe anybody called out Tank. Nobody ever called out Tank. Man, the, you know, people may be afraid, but I, I, know, I know what's gonna happen. It's second round knockout. Mark my words. We'll I come love back. This hey, shit. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna come back here. We'll talk about it. And you're gonna ask me how I knew. That's what that's what you're gonna ask. Holy shit. This is incredible confidence, man. I loved it. It's confidence so, breeds success and success breeds confidence. I was taught that. Indeed. And yeah. you know, he was talking about bad intentions. And I think, Mike, you have a reference for throwing punches with bad oh, intentions. Oh yeah, my mentor told me yes, with bad intentions. Have no emotions. Yeah. That's what fighting about controlling your emotions, because no one um fighting is really un unnatural. Even though it's it's, it's something that the, um, God gave us, and I don't know why, but it's, it's unnatural. We're not made to fight because that's why we have to wrap our hands because our hands are not made to be hitting people. Right. And um, it's just something you know instinctively what in us. You know what I've always said to myself? It's about being calm in that chaos. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it's a chaos, but if you're calm in it, you can see a lot. You know, that's cool, but when you go to the level of calmness, when you liberate yourself from yourself when you can see yourself mm, working mm, yes exactly you know, when you almost, almost like you're above yourself aside yeah. yourself watching Yo, yourself you blow my mind right now because this yeah. is exactly what i feel it's like people ask me how do you get in the zone i don't know i feel like i'm there but i'm not there so they ask me well how does that happen i say it just comes about it's god it comes in you know a form I mean? of relaxation well it's god too but you have to work as well you know it's not like, like oh, yeah. hocus yeah, pocus no, yeah. no it's not going to be like given to you you need mm -hmm. to work for it exactly because uh, you have to think um if you really a god believe it, god doesn't choose why would he choose me over this guy no, exactly you know? exactly it's yeah. just that you put in the work you put in he sees the work yes he, he put you in know. the work brother you did put in the work a lot of people mike in this generation don't 
and it sounds like we're a couple old dudes talking about back in the mm -hmm. day. But, and I'd love to, for you to speak about this. They want their cookies now. They want to skip the mm -hmm. line. They want to take a victory lap and they don't see all the work that you put in, you know, or that Mike put in to be in the position that you guys have been in. Well, my idols and my um, people I look up to are like Ali, Leonard, De La Hoya. There's a lot of people I look up to, Mike. So many, so many legends, so. That's, That's how I look at dudes. Yes, no one. It's just so many guys that are great at certain things that you right. just marvel, you know. And yeah. and that's where I want to be. I want to be like Ali. I want to be like those legends. And you know, the only way is to is to take risks, to gamble. Like in anything in life, if it's gonna be something amazing, it's gonna be hard. So I'm not scared about hard. I'm not scared about oh man, you're gonna. It's gonna be a hard fight. It's, I want it to be hard because that's the time I get a shine. Well, I was taught by my mentor, the greater the risk, the greater the reward. Yeah. 100%. You know, so I always known to take great risk. But were you, you were a little subservient back in the day to Don King and other people choosing uh, your fights. Even though you wanted to fight someone, it wasn't really your call. Is that right? No, it wasn't my call. Like when I was younger, but I would fight anybody. It yeah. was probably because anybody they chose, I would fight them. Right. Mm. Right. And now, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but there are a lot of guys in your position that would not choose what you're doing. You're going into the belly of the beast. Yeah, he has, he has called out the beast. So. Well, and he's calling the round. Yes. Here's the thing. I see a lot of these fighters and, you know, they're all talking about A side, B side, C side, and whatever they want to talk about. It's like, that's not what boxing is about. That's not what it's going to be. That's why boxing is not where it should be. And I'm here to make a change in this sport. I'm here to bring it back. That's why I'm here. So I'm gonna it. I'm gonna do whatever I can do. I'm gonna keep calling Tank out. You hear me, Tank. You see it. You're gonna watch, and you're gonna know second round. That's all I'm gonna show you. This should be okay. Tank's next fight. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If, you know what I mean? Can I say something real mm. quick, Tank? I'm gonna say it in Mike in front of Mike and Jeremy. If you do not take this fight, your legacy is forever tainted. Nobody. I mean, God nobody damn. will ever remember your name. <laughs> nobody. The money's there. I know you love money, God but money's there. Damn. If you don't take the fight next, your whole legacy forever is tainted if you don't take the next fight oh with me. Oh, my God. God damn, Tang. I ain't never heard no shit like this. I know. That's amazing. But because we're, we're living in a time where people want to make the most money possible. So they would take five easy fights before they even stepped up to Tank. This is, I mean. Exactly. And you know, it's like it's like you you want to learn, you want to get better, you want to be the best version of yourself. They want to squeeze out all the money they can. I want to squeeze out all the greatness I can. Wow, there's a difference. Greatness, right? God damn, that's heavy. We just have to that's let heavy. That sit. Yeah, it's just greatness. Wow, I want yeah. to embrace vicious mediocrity. No, I'm just kidding. No, I don't. You're crazy. No, <laughs> you know this is the deal about greatness. Um. Greatness choose you. You don't choose greatness. Yeah. Isn't that something? Man. Yeah, it chooses you. That is amazing. It, yeah. it makes you feel happy, but you know what's going to come about it. It's going to be hard. But. Yeah, but this is something I always, this is what I learned. I met a lot of great people, but most of the great people I met, they weren't good people. Mm. So you have to deal with that perspective. Are you going to be great or good or are you going to be both? Mm. No, real talk. Most of the great people I met, they weren't good people. Real selfish people. I could see that. But I, but I could also see a great person being a good person. I could see that as well. Will it be hard? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But as I was saying, most of them I met weren't. I feel like Ali huh? been good. Ali was magnificent. I met a lot of them, though. There's a lot of great people. You know. Most of them are selfish, right? Yeah, some of them have right to be so, but um, it's just not right. Even though you have the right to be that way, naturally it shouldn't have, it shouldn't be that way. We should all take our beatings in the end and just be humbled by them instead, mm. instead of being bittered by them. Did you used to be selfish? Absolutely. That's all I knew. You know, um, my conscience was my dick. Dang. That's all I, oh, selfish. I'm the youngest champ ever. I deserve how hard I work. I come from nothing. Right. Yeah. And then life told me, you know, life humbles you. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Pretty deep right there. No, it does. It does. Yeah. If, 
if you had another chance, would you, what, what would be different? Nothing. Nothing? To me, you paved the way for myself. Really? You, Ali, everybody, because it, it teaches me, you know, because there's a lot of great things you did. You know, the things you said, you know, like the outrageous things you said, to you, it's like, man, that's bad. I don't, I don't want to be that type of person. But to me, it's like, you gave the fans excitement, entertainment. You, you didn't know, but you were making somebody's day by getting them excited. But you, didn't, you did it because, I don't know, for other reasons, but you didn't even know you were, you were getting people excited. That's what I want to do. I want to get people excited when they hear me talk. You were giving me excitement. You know what? I'm an entertainer, too. You know, sometimes I'm dark, but I'm an entertainer. That's just um, my mentor. He is, okay. That's the word he put in me is to entertain people. And I think it's all about intent. What is your yeah. intent when you're saying it? Is it to really hurt that person or is it because you want to give people excitement? I want to give people excitement. I say these things because I want somebody to be like, dang, I want to watch him fight. But listen, check this out. This profound. You want to excite the people, but in order to excite them, you have to hurt him. I just, <laughs> that hey, 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 hey. <laughs> you don't want to hurt him. You want the people, but in order to get them, you gotta hurt him. I just, I just hope it don't hurt too much. Oh no, it gotta hurt a lot. You want love? You see, that's what you want: greatness and love. You gotta, you gotta earn it. You gotta hey, hurt like people. Ali, Ali boom, bye, kill him. <laughs> yeah, Mike. I mean, you, you are, you've articulated in the past. When what specifically when you say you punch with bad intentions, there was a time when you were working towards something very specifically when you were punching people. Oh, go punch right through them. Mm. My objective was to go through them, right through their brain, through their guts, just to punch through them. That's my mentor teaching. Yeah, my my mentor was very calm, but he didn't, he didn't take it personally. He just knew we were in the hurt business. Our job was to hurt people as much as we can. And, and that sounds pretty weird, right, when you think of a nice old man. But that was just our business. We were in the hurt business. We're beautiful hurt. people outside of that. But during that process, this is what we do. We hurt people. Mm. By teaching you the sweet science, that duality of how difficult it is to do what you guys do, all the angles, all the preparation, and yet you add that element to it of bad intentions. You, so, see, you see he's nice and humble and everything. In the rest of the world, he's a nice kid, but in the fighting world, those are the characteristics of a killer. Oh, he's so nice. He's, you know, big time. Then he gets in the ring. Yeah. Like that body shot. Oh, absolutely. The I body know. shot that put Luke Campbell down. Oh, right? I felt it. <laughs> you know, he's a little guy. I felt it. Yeah. And this time, listen, I saw you hitting on Francis, and I'm going to put that shit on you and hit on you. Let's, let's box right hey, now. Yeah, yeah, let's I do that mean, shit. Let me break that good. shit, nigga. <laughs> you no, beating no, no. all these motherfuckers. Leave me man. out of that one. <laughs> um, it would be good to see you guys, you know, have a have a moment where, you know, Mike was mentoring you. No, I would love that. That would be an honor. If What's Mike, your side, man? Like a horoscope? Yeah. Leo. Leo, oh, fuck, you megalomaniac, baby. Ah. You can't help it. It's good stuff. You're the leader, <laughs> baby. Everybody got to see you. <laughs> I'm a Leo too, so I yeah. identify. What, yeah. What about you, Mike? What sign are you? Cancer. Cancer. I'm that sensitive guy. I'm the guy that like um, the carpenters and shit. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Mike told me I need to be more sensitive, and he yeah. started playing me the carpenters, the carpenters the other day. I get that sometimes from my mom. It's like you don't yeah. got no sensitive chip. Yeah. I do sometimes. Well, I think that's also the way people see you. Yeah. Because you're a good-looking kid, and you work hard, and you have these fans, and it's almost like. I don't know if some of the people realize, first of all, how hard you hit, how hard you work. Um, do you think some people, even like Luke, didn't realize your power walking in and they took it for granted? Definitely. When you take first glance at me, you just don't know what's within me. So that was the, that was the That's thing. That's interesting. Because, you know, as a fighter, and I'm sure Luke has studied you, and he, he, was, he had to be aware of your punches because he saw you, the people you fought and stuff, and they're respectable people, and you're knocking them out. But I don't think that he was, um, that you're persevering. I don't think when, when you got up, I didn't think he thought you were going to get up. And then if you did get up, he thought you were going to still have bitch in you or mm -hmm, something. Mm -hmm. He didn't expect that kind of perseverance. And that's what I love about boxing. Is and that's why he gave in, because he, wow, he said... I just, hit him with my best shot. Yeah, oh, God. <laughs> hey, that was the best Damn. shot he could have landed. But God. that's the thing about boxing. Like, it tells you the truth. 
no matter what, it's going to tell you the truth when you step in. That's why it's the most honest sport in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, as soon as the two guys get in there, you could tell them, you could tell what they are. As soon as they're in yeah. the ring. Yeah. That's one of the reasons I'm fascinated by what you guys do, because I always get a second take. I can always, mm -hmm. you know, fine tune it and make it better mm -hmm. and continue to grow. And I know, Mike, you, you, you're, you're a natural born thespian and that's your, Absolutely. Your, that's your journey right now. But what we're fascinated by is you get one take mm -hmm. and, you know, there's, you know, you got to get in there and you got to thrive in that moment, which is, which is, which is you know, fascinating. You know why we fight? Because it morphs life. You know, fighting um, two guys in the ring is everything what life is about. Yeah. Who's going to give in under the pressure? Mm. Right. Yeah. Who, not necessarily who can give, but who can take the most. Yeah. That's what life is. Yeah. Who can really take it yeah. before the other guy gives in. Exactly. Is the pressure going to make you into a diamond or are you going to just fall under? That's exactly. really what it is. The perfect thing about boxing is it's unperfect. Yeah. But when you, think you don't get a second take because that's not what life is about. You don't no. get second takes. No. All you and get pressure is, one is an interesting scenario psychologically because when you think of pressure, you think of a guy in the ring punching you and lot of you. Mm. That's not pressure. Getting hit is not pressure. Pressure is the thought of being hit, mm. which is a million times worse than actually being hit. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Isn't and that it, crazy? I don't, that, yeah. It don't make no sense. No more sense at all. When, before the, I mind, go, the mind is the enemy. You know what I said? <laughs> I said, before I go in the ring, I'm saying to myself, I hate boxing. Like, I hate it. It's the mm. pressure is so much. It's like, what the heck? But, like, <laughs> that's I, real talk. Yeah. You no, know, like, I'm thinking in my head, like, this is horrible. Why in the world would anybody want to I feel that way, too. <laughs> Listen, that's amazing. in my dressing room, I'm a, I'm a wreck. I'm, a, I'm just a wreck. And right. then I start walking down that aisle. And then once I'm in the ring, I feel mm. like I'm a god. Yeah. It's different, it's, right? Woo! It's a different, oh, that's a different feeling, man. Yeah. Going through that weird, and so scared. And it's like you're it's, transforming yes, into something exactly. else. Like, and people are like, what do you feel like? I said, I don't even know the exact moment, but it's like, and then you're like, you're just, a, you're just. Sometimes mm -hmm. in my dressing room, um, I thought I was going to have a heart attack or pass out before. The next thing you know, they say, it's time to go out or something. Boom. <sighs> Disciplined. So much of a variable to being great with what you guys do is it it's how you handle that moment because you, the guy you're facing I mean, you mm. think about it what's crazy about mike is everyone he faced was bigger than him and weighed more than him yes you know what i mean it's this open division mm. it's it's another added that's element a hard division i don't i mean that shows how special mike is yeah for him to be fighting these giants and mike is i never looked at it as me being special it's just my it was my, yes, I wanted to make my mentor happy and to make him happy, I had to hurt them. I guess not be, I had to hurt them. Yeah. Yeah. Hearing that from Mike is you just know? confirmation. Like, that's what makes you great. You ain't fighting for yourself. You're fighting for somebody else. You know what else. greatness is? Greatness is doing something that's very, very difficult with the simple of ease. That's yeah. all greatness is. People make greatness is, what they're talking about is honor. Mm. And you can't win on it. You're born with that shit. You can lose it, though. Mm. In the process of, some people in the process of winning on it, we lose it. Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't know we have it. We're born with it. Right. Mm. It, it is, is there something maybe even subconsciously that you maybe wanted to get knocked down to learn that lesson to see if you're capable of navigating it? That's a good question. I don't know if, like, I don't know if that knockdown was meant to be or whatnot. I, I really don't know, but... Before I went into the fight, my ankle wasn't hurting. The moment I'm in the locker room, my ankle starts a little tweak, and I'm like, weird, it's odd, mm. don't pay no mind. I'm in the ring. I think about my ankle for a split second. I look up and I just react. It's not that I wasn't ready, I, I just reacted, and then I get hit, and people say, you see black, I seen light. I don't that see crack. no- That Yeah, I don't see no black, I seen light. And then I was like, oh, man, I'm on the floor. Felt great. And I was like, you know what? I could get back in there. I wasn't losing the fight. I just got caught, and I went right back to it. But it's for, like, to me, I didn't feel embarrassed. I didn't feel out of control. I just said, hmm, okay. It felt kind of like it was right. It was, it was a very special 
crazy thing that shouldn't have happened but did happen, but I'm happy it did now. Right. <laughs> you know? Do you, like, do you think it's a good thing that that happened? To Absolutely. Him? I bet you most of the people, like the old school guys, said that was good that that happened. Yeah, so they now, did. Yeah. So now you know you can get back up. Now you know you don't have to panic. You know, if that happened, take your tent, your eight count or whatever, yeah. come back up and continue fighting. Yeah. Is there anything he could have done differently to avoid it, th that particular shot? Well, listen, I noticed once he got up, he kept his head down. Mm -hmm. But that split second, his head was up. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You saw that yeah, in the ring, yeah, your yeah. head was up. Uh -huh. Then I saw your head, and then you started yeah, putting, yeah. yeah. It started going like yeah. that, because I had to be a little tighter. Um, obviously, Luke is a pretty good rangy fighter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's how to use his distance, right? He was faking a lot. So, you know, I, I, went, I put my head up, and he cracked me. So I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? I'm gonna keep this head down and just exactly. keep on, you know, always working. have your head down. Yeah. Yeah. It's just those little the, tiny. Listen, fighting is not a second, it's a tenth of a second timing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The slowest guy that you see, his hands are faster than a second. Even the slow guy is faster than a second. Can you believe that? What, a second the, is real slow in boxing. Yeah, you know, a second, a fucking second. <laughs> that, that's too slow. That's They're like, too yo, he's fucking slow. slow. Right. A second. What's what's the worst thing you can do in the ring? Is it is it for a moment doubt yourself or what's the never doubt you shouldn't even be in there if you doubt mm -hmm. yourself. The purpose of fighting is to build character. To make you um enthusiastic about fighting. So can you imagine their ego? Thinking about they're gonna represent God and one day reign with God. You yeah. don't know the ego of a fighter. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes they think they're God. Mm -hmm. and that's when you get, could get humble real quick. Yeah. The thing is, you asked the question, what was the worst thing you could do before getting in the ring is not working out hard. Oh, listen. <laughs> that's the, if you want to know the worst thing, listen. is not putting in the work. Because a four-round fight could feel like a 12-round fight if you don't work hard. Listen, you um, know what I always tell people? Um, I'd rather fight hurt but be in condition than not be hurt and then be out of shape. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was hurt during the, um, the training, and they said, Mike, man, what you going to do? I said, I'm in shape, though. I'd rather fight hurt and be in shape than not be hurt and fight out of shape. You exactly. know what I mean? Right? That's so true. That's so true. You, you don't want to be gassed in no, a race. No. That's no, you don't want to doubt that yeah. you're gassed. Yeah. But then there's some guys that could drink a fifth of alcohol, go in there and fight all night and fight great, but without right. it, they're bums. <laughs> That's so crazy. Because they need to be bum. relaxed, right? Yeah, without a dead bum. But they smoke, they drink that liquor, and they go in there, and they're lions. Right. Alcohol is such an illusion, though. That's but, what it is. You know? He put his hope in the, bod the bottle. That's crazy. His faith and hope in that bottle. Even though it's killing you little by little. Yeah. Yeah, No, but it's that's... like every kind. It's like cocaine. Yeah. It helps you at the beginning, then it mm -hmm. takes away so much. Yeah. You it's know, an illusion. Like I remember oh, you absolutely. saying that. It's, it's all illusion. illusion. All an illusion. <laughs> right. I love it. <laughs> you just have to um, like all these songs and stuff. Sometimes um, we're in we're 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 in prison for my memories. You know, you, mm. you're young now. Well, no, you remember probably being poor, things happening. You know, you know the bad things that happen exactly. in your life. We all prison to that shit. But anyway, that's the stuff that that enrages us to succeed in life. Right, but we, but, yeah, but we never forget it. That's the torture. Yeah. It it expels us the greatness, but we never forget it. And that's the pain. And you can tap into that pain. Oh, absolutely. And use it. That's the it's whole your friend. thing. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's that's definitely the the case with acting. You're, you're, absolutely. So the actor's nightmare is you're thrown out on stage. You're in the middle of a play. You don't know what play it is, and you're lost, and you have to dig your way out. What's what's the fighter's nightmare? Is there a nightmare that you guys have had? No, listen, you're just being humiliated. That's yeah. our nightmare. It's getting beat up and humiliated. And but then we don't realize that expose who we are. And that's what makes the people love you even more. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're absolutely exposed. There's a there's so yeah. many things that you could be scared of before going to a fight. I, I, I get so many doubts, so many things trying to make me doubt myself and it could it could be from the weigh-ins to the press conference from the fight, but to be, to be honest, it's it's just all things like it, that's an illusion in itself. It's all an illusion, yeah. It's all an illusion, but and I actually it, told myself that. But without that, that my illusion, fight. you wouldn't be able to perform yeah. the way yeah. you do. And a I even yeah, illusion, that huh? came into my mind, which is crazy. Before my fight, the doubts were trying to hit me, and I said it's all an illusion. 
<laughs> I, I remember Mike said, I was like, this is an illusion. I'm about to go in there and destroy this, man. Exactly. You know what I mean? When I, when I hit that stage and I seen those people, man, it was my moment. I just let myself be free and I knew what I was going to do. Is it a different... How old are you? 22. 22. <sighs> Mike, how old were you when, when you became heavyweight champ? 20, 20, but I listen, can I tell you something? It's like a dream. I, it's the way I act back and the way I believe what the words I use. It's just like a dream. I was just a little kid like him. Yeah, absolutely, man. But it's, it's different now because you were living, for the most part, under the radar. You're in the Catskills, you're absolutely. training. You know, he is, is, is navigating a world and doing it beautifully where so much of it is being documented, you know? Yeah, yeah. And he's embracing it. But our reference for people that are on YouTube and that are using that medium are people that don't really work hard you know what I mean? Yeah, and they're using that medium for their own profit and gain, and they may not be really skilled. And this is something different. Well, listen, that's awesome, too. You know what? But know what about him? By him, this changes boxing. By him being involved with that, instead of people knowing him in, in half the world, they know him in the whole world now. Mm. This is good for information. You just have to know it. Don't get caught up with it. Right. Yeah. But then you have to understand this. The biggest narcotic in the world is what? That. Dopamine? Oh. <laughs> That. No, dopamine. That. <laughs> That's the biggest narcotic in the world. Now, I'm teaching you this right now. Yeah. This right here is more power than food and cocaine, acid, whatever you think is the powerful drug. This is it. Everybody wants to be a part of it. They want this in their life forever. Can't, some people can't live without it. They want to die in front of it. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh -uh. Th th this is a, th no. This is a stem of your greatness. This helps you... Show your greatness all over the world. That's what I. That's what I do it for. That's why I do social media. That's why I make sure that you know I reach as many people as I can. Because to me, I look at it as like I want to inspire as many people as I can. I will. I will not stop to the day I die to reach more and more people just to give them hope <laughs> and to give them passion and to give them something to fight for. How long for you want to do that? Always. How long do you want to do that though? Forever to the day I die, I will never stop. And I will continue for the rest of my life. I promise that's to everybody watching. I will never stop till I inspire the whole world. Love wow. you guys. Right. Wow. It got you already. You don't even know it. <laughs> Man, hey, it got you already. You did that, it got you hey, already, right? Yeah. You didn't see, know you see it. my switch, because yeah. that was you, though. No, listen, I'm the same way. Yeah. Once they, well, listen, once you, uh, you know, once you turn this, I'm the humble Muslim. Once you turn this on, hey, I'm the king of the world. I'm God. I don't know. I'm addicted, too. <laughs> I'm addicted too. You got yeah. me there. You said, hey, yeah. all you had to do is this. And I was like, oh, yeah, I no, no, I understand. Listen, I understand. That's like, come on, no. I, I'm, I love it too. I, I can't live without it. Now you, I got this. You, you, <laughs> I can't live without it. You're addicted, Mike, but you've done the work. You've, you're not defined by this. No, you've done listen, the work on yourself. I'm not defined by this, but my whole motivation was like he said i need this to show the world to see me right exactly yeah. i want right. the world to see me that i want to be champion of countries that don't even speak my language that's, exactly, uh, that's, that's, yes, that's exactly how i, feel. I was that's listening crazy. i was listening to some of these great warriors like xerxes and these guys and he was saying he said i'm i'm king of so many countries i'm king of countries that i don't even speak their language yeah that's heavy yeah that's, that's what some i want to be stuff right there yeah. though that's how i feel i want to yeah. I want to reach people that don't even know what I'm saying because they can feel your heart. You don't got to speak the same language. People feel your heart. And that's what I plan to do. When you want to do this stuff because nobody wants to do you do this when you can't do nothing else. But when you want to do this and it's not for money, then whoa, you have a, def you have a really dangerous person. Yes. <laughs> you have a real but, dangerous person. And they can feel it. They can feel that. They can feel that intent when it's authentic. Exactly. It's beautiful, exactly. man. I want to see what Tank and all these guys and Devin think about this guy talking like that. Ooh. I don't know what they, listen, if you said that to my time, you'd be the next guy. Like sometimes even some guys, like Alvin McCall, he wasn't, a, I don't think he was experienced enough to fight me, but he used to talk crap about fighting me. So I said, all right, be my sparring partner. Like, all these guys thought they were tough, and I said, be my sparring partner. How did that work out? It worked out great. He became champion. That's right. But that's cool that you took him under your wing like that. 
No, he thought he was a tough guy. Then they take him on my wing. If you imp- if you fight good enough and you can help me improve myself, yeah, you're on the team. Okay. The objective was the, for me to break his spirit because he was talking so much shit when he saw me. He knocked the guy out the ring. He saw me. He said, I want you. I want you. But he wasn't experienced. But he had like 10 fights then. Mm, and yeah. then I said, okay, why don't you come spar with us? Anybody that thought they were tough and was saying I want Tyson, I said, no, be my sparring partner. Be up there for two months with me and see if you, have, see if you laugh. Right. Well, however you want to call it, that's still ultimately a gift for them because you're giving them an opportunity to see who they are. Oh, absolutely. A lot of them find that they're not who they really believe they are. You know, but then they they got some work to do. Yeah, but then they continue to stay with us and they became better. Yeah. It's the way to go. Absolutely. It's all about sacrificing. You know? I just want Tank to know, you know, he's still going to be a hero of Baltimore. He's still going to be, you know, that man in Baltimore. But this is my time. It's my moment. And it's my era. It's not yours. But you you had a good little run. But it's not, you're not here for a long time. I'm sorry to tell you, but I'm here for a long time. That's that. See how and vicious and shady he I'm, is? I'm sorry to say. You see that? See it won't hurt. I promise you it won't is. hurt. It's going to last a split second. You won't even know it hit you. It's just going to. Ooh, gonna, like that? It's just. Lethal. It's, it's Lethal. Gonna be, it's going to be a, a very calm knockout. Just a very boom. It's over. And I'll pick him up too. I'm going to pick him up. I'm going to lift Listen, him up. He is so much different than Oscar. This is like Ricky Ricardo in fucking boxing gloves, right? <laughs> no, serious, right? He's yeah. fucking entertaining. He's right. fucking gorgeous and he's talking physical shit. This is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so Oscar, Oscar didn't, forgive me because I can't quite remember right now, he didn't really call people out like this, is what you're well, saying. Well, Oscar called people out too and stuff. But, you know, I could tell from Oscar and everything, he picked everything up and he's using everything, you know? Got it. A lot of people paved the way for somebody. Yeah, you know. Oscar was one of the ma- ma- massive mega stars. Yes, for sure. You know, absolutely. And he's one of your mentors. Yeah, I mean him, Canelo, yes. um, Bernard, so many people. I'm so blessed, so grateful mm-hmm. to have so many amazing people around me. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't write it up better. I mean, for you to have the pound for pound champ right now, Canelo Alvarez, you got Oscar De La Hoya, you got Bernard. And so many people along the way, I can't but, even... I re- listen, young man, you're your own man when you liberate yourself from them. Yes. You know, they're great to be on your side, but it comes a time you need to liberate yourself from them and be your own person and establish your own domain around you. Yeah. And don't have to share with other people unless you want to. You're right, Ashley. And that, you know every fighter wants to do that deep down inside. Even though they love who they're with and they help them, they want to liberate themselves and be their equal. Mark, wants to be yeah. the equal of Oscar and Bernard and um, right. and Canelo. Canelo and all that. I want to be their equal. I want to look at them like this. I don't want to always look at you like... Yep. But it's interesting because you're in the mix with Canelo. So you're side by side with him. And I think, you know, from where I'm sitting and watching you, it, it, it affected your presence in the ring. I mean, when you're around somebody that, you know, is at a higher level at the moment, if you're not naive and ignorant, you're going to become something because, you know, the only way I wouldn't be able to gain something from that, just seeing it, is if I was ignorant and stupid. You know, I'm not, when I get a grasp of something, I won't stop till I take it to a whole nother level. Mm. So, you know, my whole goal is, you know, Ali was the greatest. In my eyes, mm-hmm. I want what I want to do is to be the last greatest ever. I mean, he wow. he put that there, but I want to be the last greatest ever. That means he paved the way. He showed me where it could be, but I want to be the last one to do it. There's no one greater than me after that, and that's that. That's you my could dream. Do, but you could do that and still be an entrepreneur as well. Let's do it all. <laughs> yeah, no, but really, yeah. you could do that and be an entrepreneur as well and control your own destiny and write your own checks and don't have to. Wait for somebody else to have your money before you get it. Mm. You know what I mean? Somebody else, you know, you know, checking your money out before you get it. That's true. Write your own checks. Right you write our own checks at um, Legends Only League. We write our own oh, checks. Damn. Nobody write. Okay. I'm the boss, baby. Let's go. There you go. I'm the boss. But I mean, you learned the hard way. Oh, Mike. absolutely, absolutely. It's good oh, to learn God. that way. But I learned. There you go. Some people, look how many people went through that, I, what I went through, 
And they still didn't like they killed themselves, they OD'd and stuff, and they just gave up on life. Right. You know, and I was going that direction too. And then all of a sudden, I, I, I met my wife. I knew her for years, but we got together, and just, things just started changing. It's, I don't even know, maybe she was the good luck piece, but just started changing rapidly. Yes. Rapidly. She's definitely been an angel in your life. Yeah, so I know if you take this box and stuff too serious, and um, get caught up with greatness, you know. Um, I, this is what I found out. The step from, uh, there's only one step from the limo to the gutter. Mm. Oh, damn. Wow. That's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm sure your parents must have said that too, huh? Yeah. It, that's real old. That's, that's saying it's real that's old. That's heavy. It's very heavy. Yeah, if you step out that car, yeah. that gutter right there. Yeah. Right. yeah. So don't get used to that limo and yeah. think that you can't fall. Exactly. And you can fall in any moment. And you God will tell you that. Yes. And you touched upon it earlier. You said something about, I'm not a God and I'm not a piece of shit. And if you're somewhere in the middle, because you can see yourself and have, and, and as we were just saying earlier, you know, it's, it's a narcotic and you have all these people celebrating you and following you and you can get drunk on that mm -hmm. um, and forget who you are. And the more you know who you are and you're present and grounded, navigating that, that's brilliant. Well, you know, come, listen, I, yeah. you know our greatest act and know what they are? I'm with you. They're not, um, I don't know, what, what do you say? They don't, um, they're not balanced. They're extreme. They're either up or they're down. Right. It's one or the other. And that's how these kind of guys work. Well, touching back what you said, where like you're not a god or you're not a piece of shit, you know? And when I call myself king of the ring, the way I look at it is, like, I'm king in the ring. Like, I'm not, you know, to me, God is king of all. So, like, even when I stepped in the ring, when I pray, I take off that crown and I bow down right. to what's higher than me. You're not getting higher than God. But ain't no man on this earth will ever make me bow down. And that's fact. All day long, every day, <laughs> anybody who steps in that ring to me, they will go down. I love it. I love like it, man. This guy. <laughs> this is so cool. I can't believe I wish we had the other. We gonna have, no, we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to invite both of them here at the same time. We can have that too. Like that. You know, there ain't gonna be no confrontation because everybody would be here, make sure no confrontation. But that, you know, they should both right. say their peace. Uh, Mike, I think like Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali. Yeah, but no yeah. fights. Yeah, you know, yeah. Right? But Mike, you just have to be ready to step in the middle. No, listen, these, listen, this is the deal, right? We are two, these are two men and they're entrepreneurs. When yeah. they get in the ring, they're fighters, but right now they're entrepreneurs. Yeah. Mike, I got a tank on this phone, you want it? Yeah, tank! Oh my God. Fuck up, nigga. Oh hey, tank! Oh my God. What's going on? I love you. This nigga talking mad shit over here, tank. <laughs> Look at this nigga, two tank. Two rounds, baby, two rounds. Two rounds. I don't care. You on pause. Two rounds. Two rounds, you're going to sleep. Two rounds, you, hey, it's not gonna hurt. I promise you, it's not gonna hurt. I don't care what you got. Yeah, yeah, all that. You better open up. You're gonna need a ladder to hit me. How tall are you? You 5'5". Five, five. You don't need a ladder to hit me. You're gonna need a Stairmaster. Boy, you won't be able to touch me. You ain't never fought a 135 in your life. Just different. Just, I don't care what Call you say. You ain't got nigga. nothing. You ain't got nothing. Boy, I don't care. You too ugly to be champ. I'm oh. fucking champ. And that's from Muhammad Ali. Boy, I'm pretty. You ain't never seen nothing like me. I promise you. You can talk to Mike. Have a good time with Mike. You hear this shit, man? Oh, you hear this shit, man? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Have a good time with Mike. Oh, don't worry. You can, hey, yeah, I'll hit me with that shot. You're going to need a Stairmaster, boy. Yes. If I would have hit him, you know I would have killed him after that. Hey, keyword. Oh. Keyword. Would have. If I, if. Can your next fight be with this nigga, man? What the, <laughs> nigga, we on worldwide television. Can you fight this nigga talking mad shit, man? We fighting next, we fighting next. Let's go, oh, let's go. Yeah. Hey, hey, yeah, you yeah, lying, he nigga. Said he said it, the world, hey, hey, the world knows, he said it. Next fight, there's no going back now. There ain't no going back. Hey, you better commit to it. Sign that, baby, sign it. Sign it a thousand, hey, look at me, I'm dancing. I'm happy, look, I'm, I'm dancing bachata on you. I'm bachata, hey. Hey, hey, hey. I'm happy, let's go. Let's get it on, baby. Let's get it on. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey.
man, you got this threat, man. You got this nigga drunk. The next fight, can't let this nigga drunk this shit. Look at him, Dre. Woo! Let's go, Tank! Let's go! Bang, there he go, he's out. A tank, man, this is mad. He talking nigga shit. <laughs> huh? Tank, you gonna fight this nigga in the next fight? Talk to the world, Tank. Yeah, I'm gonna fight him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fight him. Fight him next. There it is. You gonna fight? Oh shit, the whole world, man. Right. Is oh, there we go. You're going down. Let's go, baby. Going down. Woo. It's set in stone now, baby. All right, we got it on, guys. The next yeah. fight. Yeah. Let's Ooh, go. Shit. All right, you too. We all have. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. 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 Thank Fuck. History. Woo! You know what mushrooms are? I've seen it a couple times. Yeah, I've done a lot of mushrooms before the show. Shit, man. This is my favorite. Woo! It was beautiful. Oh, shit. Time to relax. God, it was that was great. That <laughs> was Rich beautiful. Man. That was show business. This nigga talking that was mad it. shit. That's God, a knockout, baby. That's a knockout. Oh fuck. This gotta go right away on YouTube, man. This is fucking interesting, man. The fucking Leo has to want the world to see him. This kid knows how to seize the moment. <laughs> That's when the Ricky fucking Ricardo comes out, right? Talk, yeah, yeah, man, 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 talking shit. I love it. Oh, man. That was beautiful, though. Fuck. Wow. I'm just happy he confirmed it on this. Yeah, the whole world looking for there this. There ain't no going back now. Go. There ain't no going back. Yeah. Hey, once he said yeah, and the cameras are on, you heard it. He cannot. If he goes back, you heard it. He's his his legacy is. Oh, you don't even talk about legacy. Fuck, it's man. gone. It's interesting because when you started calling him out, he wasn't coming back. So, Mike, he really forced his hand. Yeah, he should have said, man, I'm going to kill you, motherfucker. I'm fighting you next. You motherfucker, you up there. I'm going to fucking kill you, nigga. Yeah, Javante could have said that, but he felt that in energy. There was no coming out. Oh, me. man, come on, Tank. You got to fight, motherfucker. <laughs> I guarantee you, Tank's thinking of that number two in his head right now. He's seen two. Oh, my gosh, two. He's going to have nightmares thinking about two. Second round, this he's is out. beautiful, baby. God, I could. Yeah. How this shit going down? We got these two guys fighting. Tank, man, please fight this nigga. Don't embarrass people. And oh. shit. <laughs> oh. and, uh, how how can he not? He, there's no way. After this, right? This is gonna be so awesome, shit. How do we get to instigate this shit? This is beautiful, man. It's amazing. Uh, beautiful shit. We're gonna have to be ringside. Hey, um, there's no, there's not gonna be any people at the fight, you know, the pandemic. If you fight some Neff, it's still in the pandemic. We're gonna have to watch from here, like there we did go. my fight. We had to watch at the office. Yeah, but we I wish mean, you well. Thank you, thank you. God willing, it, things will open up. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, yeah. We had a little bit at uh, my last fight, like six thousand people. Really? Yeah. Really? That's so awesome. Yeah. So I would love for you to be there. I would love to be there. This is a super fight. What what they used to call back in the eighties? They used to call them the little giants. You know, <laughs> yep. this is the big time baby. That's right. But listen, see, and this is what's interesting too. Well, I, I know people don't like me to say this to you because you're a fighter. You doing all this shit? Do you, do you know how much money? And you know, do you get your shit right? Because most fighters, because when I was at your stage, I had no idea about my money. I let other people take that. You got to be your own business, man. You got to be on your business. Yeah. And you should write checks to these guys. Personally, you mm. you write them. Yeah, that's have somebody with a bag hold your checks with you. They have your checkbook, and you should just check. If you feel like just giving the money to the whole world and going broke, you should be the one to do it. I love that. So... You understand that now more than ever. What was you shouldn't the enter this business unless you're an entrepreneur. That's what I learned. I entered this for my honor that I already had. Because I was a fucking, at least I believed that I was a bum. Just like this guy. And that's how people take advantage of you. They take advantage of your insecurities. Mm. Mm. It's like your insecurities make you great. You know, they make you vulnerable as well. Either way, right? Yeah. And you trusted that these people had your best interest? Not that I trust, I didn't give a fuck. I wanted glory. 
Man, I, I'm, I'm still hyped up. Whore. I feel like I want to knock out Tank right now. You got me too hyped <laughs> up. Man, I feel like I wish he was right here in front of me. Ooh. Like, he didn't have You got to think. Fighters so, got to think like this. Once I beat him, you know where else I'm going? I'm mm. going closer to God, nigga. Oh, I like that. I like God, how you put that. Nigga. Every that's fight, I keep God it closer status, to God, man. God status, nigga. Hey, yeah. that, that's going to sit with me for a while, yeah. just you saying that. That's why we fight to get God status. That's mm. really what it is, man. We want people to look up to us. Yeah. Cause I, we don't look up to I us. I just think <laughs> it ain't that stuff. We want people to love us because we don't love ourselves. But you've learned to love yourself. Oh, absolutely. And it's a tough job. It's an inside job. It's really tough. Yeah. And he already has that love. He is a. He, this is an interesting dude right here, man. Really interesting. Fascinating. Yeah, but this, this, this drug could take the love that you have for you and just give it to this. You give everything you got to this and have nothing for yourself. And I think I'm okay with that. I hear you. I love that. Love that. That's who I was. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay. I'd rather just give myself to everybody else and, you know, let God see me as I am and that's it, you know. That yeah. sounds like you, you're talking to Karl Marx and shit. <laughs> you know, that's how I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. My mentor thought, like, you know, socialist was the world. That was God. You know, everybody should help people and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then how could people know who they are? How can, like you said, how could people know who they are if no one, every time they get knocked down, somebody helps them up instead mm -hmm. of them getting up by themselves? True. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Isn't that weird? A lot by of helping do. people, we're hurting them. By us taking up, by me taking my son and he's a little, but. Making sure he has everything for that he doesn't have to work for nothing or just struggle. How do you know who he is? Yeah. Is that How do he? I forget right. me. I'm living my life. How does he know who he right. is? Right. That's true. That's you true. Know? By me giving him, every time he hurts himself, I'm putting the bandage on. My wife is putting the bandage on him and stuff. You know, it's just. Interesting way to look at that, too, yeah. Now, if I was that way, I wouldn't be who We would never be here. Mm. If somebody loved me and took care of me like that, I would never be here with you guys. Right. Mm. But you're giving in ways you don't even know it, both of you, inspiring people. You know? There's a lot of that going on. Well, you just have to make sure you're inspiring the right people. You can't yeah. control that. Well, That's hard. yeah. Well, I don't want to be like the guy in Catcher in the Rye, and he inspires, you know, different yeah. kind of people. Mm, I know yeah. what you mean. You it's know? the message you put out. Mm. You know what I mean? Because that's, if you put out a message of, hate and this that trust me it's going to inspire somebody to do some hate you inspire somebody to do good guess what that's going to inspire somebody to do good what's the message you're putting out there if you're pushing putting out all i care about is this i'm gonna squeeze out uh, uh you know all this you know just bull like bull you know what i mean you're gonna inspire somebody to do some bull but if you inspire somebody to do something good trust me that right person to inspire will reach what i'm hearing from you is you honor those that came before you you're Always. talking about Mike and Ali and all these other guys, and they're people of your generation that don't necessarily have a reference for that, and you're showing them hard work. You know, so this selfish. is different. There's a lot of selfish going on in and the you know, world. And I was just like him, but then he's going to reach the state when he's going to realize, why the fuck am I to who am I think that I am that people should listen to me? And then when I thought that way, then I said I went to the history of thought. <laughs> you know? You've been there already. Yeah, what, what made me get this idea to think that I'm somebody? Mm -hmm. You know, why do I think that this world can't exist without me? And why do I think if I die, I'm reaching my, my, my greatest pers perspective? Well, it's interesting because when you're in that ring, you have to be totally present and feel that there's no one that's greater than you. It's and absolutely. then you have to somehow shut that off when you leave how do the you ring. Shut, no, no, no. Now, how do you do that? No, say you... You saying all you going through all this one, then it, it over in like what a second, and now you still got that energy up. It to me, it doesn't you go know? away until you start no. training for that next fight or something, because that 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 feeling, it don't and go see, away. And that was different for me. I was on all the time. <laughs> I was on every second of the day. That's why I got in trouble. I always got assault charges and stuff because I was always on. Yeah, I was always on. I didn't know I, the discipline. I didn't use the discipline to get. I fell in love with that illusion. Mm. And you went through that journey yeah. and you faced yourself. And I think in certain ways you could be a great mentor to him, you know, 
to Ryan. And, mm. and you know, it's, it's interesting because we, we're having these moments and it feels so natural and we think, oh, we're going to see each other tomorrow. And the reality yeah. is, I don't know when you guys are going to see each other again. You're going to see so, me knock out Tank in the second round. That's what I'm going to see. I'm going to the fight. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's what so you're going to see me at the fight. <laughs> but here, here's my question, and forgive me for even throwing yeah. this out there. Is there anything that you wanted to show him? Any adjustments? Anything? Because the reality no. is, Mike, you're you're off doing your own thing, and he no, is. No, no, no. What is, is he's going to figure out? Now, he's 22, but all this shit is about is your babies and your family at the end. You got to prepare. That's why you need your liberation so you can prepare for your family. Yeah. These people, they have family too. You think they're going to take care of your family before they have family? And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying they're bad guys. I'm just yeah. saying you need to liberate yourself. You need to be your I own boss. I understand you of that, yeah. You know. And I don't care who gets mad. Tell them to come see me. I don't think they want to, Mike. No, but you know what I'm talking about, Yeah, I know, I know what you mean, yeah. We're all afraid to confront these guys when we... You got to think about your family. You have babies? You have two baby girls. No, so what about them? Nobody should matter but them. That's real talk. That's, that's real hard shit right there. Yeah. Nobody should matter. Don't care whose feelings are hurt, right? Absolutely. This is not a feeling game. This is yeah. a business. This is objectiveness. There's no feelings involved. What's right and what's wrong? Objectiveness. No feelings. Mm -hmm. Right or wrong. No gray stuff. I knew there was something different about you. You have two kids. Yes. Yeah. There's, there's a level of maturity from this guy that you don't see from 22-year-old kids. Because you've had to step up. And I just walk with God. I feel like I, that's where I get my knowledge from. So I walk with God every step of the way. That's why I just listen. And God told you to take care of your family first. No, I'm serious. No, I, that's why I give Go you. Go any book. He any, confirmed any it. Books. Yeah. Go take care of your family. You don't take care of your family. You're nothing, man. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's You got to do that. It's, it's just, it just has to be second nature. And he's right. I can't, I can't worry about whose feelings. I got to take care of my family. I got to make sure they're good at all times, no matter what. So You see him up here talking to things. That's going in other people's pockets before he gets some of that money. Yeah. You know, but other people are going to be shuffling. He's, you know, he needs his own guy. Even if they're not, he needs to be his own man. You know, just like I should have been earlier. Your yeah. own guy. And you can still love those guys or whatever, but look at them as, e as equals. The people that took your money and did you wrong, have you let that go and do you forgive them? Look, I, I'm not mad at nobody. Yeah. There you go. That's why look you're so healthy. now. God. And that's why you know it's successful. I mean? Imagine if I gave up and killed them, and now I'm in jail for the rest of my life. Right. Jerking off all the time or something. Yeah. Nobody <laughs> wins. I'm fucking some people. You're stabbing people. And then right. I, when I go in prison, I'm a totally different kind of person. Right. So imagine if I do that for the rest of my fucking life because of these scumbags. Right. There are people that did hurt managers and hurt their, and then they're in prison for the rest of their lives. Right. Forgi forgiveness, there's nothing more oh, powerful. Listen, um, forgiveness is more powerful than a bullet. Forgiveness. I'm, I'm just very grateful that I don't have to hear that word much. That I have, you know, man, people have to forgive me. God damn. The power of that. You'll learn one day. You know. You're not I, ready for it. Stay the way you are. You're not ready for none of that stuff yet. But yes, you're around. It, it'll come around. You'll understand that. you understand compassion then. Look at me, I'm a savage now. I'm talking about compassion. The word really kicked my ass, huh? Man. <laughs> Shit, whatever, whatever you went through, man. And the reason you forgave is the reason why you're right here and doing great. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the story of Jesus, man. Forgiveness. Yes, yes. Forgiveness, yeah. nigga. Well, you have a Jew in the corner, but I respect Jesus. Jesus was yeah. a Jew, and you know, man. but I still feel you. Yeah. We can all yeah. pray together. Every day. All, all, yeah. Love all around. I don't Eat care. Together. I don't care about religion. All I care about is relationship with God. That's it. There you go. Religion could go a million ways. Well, you know, yeah. you have, when you think about a situation, you think of relationship with God. Just think about this. Many people got killed over it. Many people died yeah. over certain gods. Because how they you, believe their you, God is the only how God. How do you put God in perspective? This is the way. In my, in my humbling heart on this subject is, 
people always say, oh, Mike's this way, Mike's that way. How do you know somebody if you're not close to them? How are you going to know God if you don't are not close to God or ask God, can I be close to you? You're never going to know. I'm never going to know who you are unless I talk to you every day. You ain't, you're not going to know who I really am unless you talk to me every day. That's my perspective on it. It's all about having a relationship with God. You could spin it any way, Christian, Catholic. You, you can go any way you want. To me, it's relationship with God, trusting him, and just getting closer to him every day. Talk to him every day. You'll find out sooner or later. You ever, discuss, you ever looked at um, program like the history of God? Oh, oh, I think on Netflix I've seen that with... Um, no, 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 no. It's not, it's not like YouTube. Uh, Netflix don't have nothing like that. I'm talking about the history. Like, you're talking about stuff with Morgan Freeman. Yeah, no, you no, see that? that? No, that's <laughs> bullshit, yeah. okay? I'm talking about you look at the history of God and if people being perspective, this is what their yeah. perspective is. Mm-hmm. You know, how does God come into reality? How does he have so many different names over the, the time of life? His Could name you, has <laughs> changed all the way to Jesus, Prophet Muhammad... Yeah, um, you know, um, so many different Indian gods. I, but at one time there were Sumerian gods, and they were the same story, but with different names. Mm-hmm. And then they turned into Roman and, Cre- and Greeks and Americans and Africans. Now we're all the same. But at one time these same deities, Jesus, Prophet, they were different gods. They got their religion from these gods. Because you know, I'm a Muslim, and I watched in and Sumerian. They 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 prayed like this too back then. I say that's probably where. That came from this and this and this and on your knees. And I said, wow, right. that was Islam before Islam was thousands of years before it even existed. Right. So, you know, religion is in, listen, um, they have to, under, under Africa, there's this country that's under Turkey that's older than Africa, mm. like 9,000 years old. And, under, and in there, they found um, an altar where people was worshipped. So as we know that God's been worshiping for 9,000 years. As we know, it could have been, that's just what we found. It could have been other, maybe some, the country maybe underneath longer, that country yeah. that's been worshiping God. We know nothing about God but that it exists in us. Yeah. It, God exists in us. Yeah. That's just bottom line. Our brain is not sophisticated enough to fathom God. He didn't make us that way. But we still try. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, it's always, you, we're never going to have like an understanding. It's just, you got to, you know, you got to know that God is forever. He's just like, to me, it's like change. It's always change, 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 evolve, change, and change. And God rules what you think our rules are. Really. I know, you read, I know you read the book, and but mm-hmm. God rules basically what humans think they are. You know, regardless of what we do behind closed doors. You know, our, our, religion, um, our religion doesn't stop our humanity. Doesn't, you know, form my humanity either. We we come from savages, and we were taught to behave and act like this. Mm. We didn't just um, we evolved this way. We were taught to be this way because if we didn't act this way, we'd get punished. From probably hundreds of thousands of years ago, we went through it. But some people evolve more than others, and some people stay having animals and have mm. the animal gene. Yeah. That's why we have serial killers. <laughs> you know, they don't always. Um, Reform to the human status of following the law and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you guys feel like when everything aligns, like for instance, when you're in the ring and everything's come to fruition and you're totally present and you're on the, your highest vibration, that you're closer to God? I'm only close to God when I'm alone. You know. Mm. I don't feel him when I don't feel him when I'm in the ring. So that's my ego in the ring. Mm. I can only I can only experience God when I'm in the presence of quietness and silence. But you did say the gods of war have ignited your ego. Yes, but that's that's selling tickets, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Let him know. I'm selling tickets, nigga. <laughs> Man, you gotta understand. Like some yeah. stuff is just to get the people going. I learned I how to that. use my ego. To take advantage of my ego, stop letting my ego take advantage of me. Right. You know. Everyone has to be quiet and go inward. And we all pray to different gods, but that doesn't mean that someone else's God is any more or less legitimate than yours. Listen, know we know we know we worship. We worship the characteristics of God. And the characteristics of God is in all the books. You know? 
That's just what it is. Yeah. When it's characteristic. I, I you know, I have the characteristics of a whole bunch of religions. But I'm a Muslim. But you know, if I was just a straight Muslim and didn't know any other religion, then I wouldn't be a wise Muslim. If I only was thinking about my religion, I have to understand everyone else as well. Right. I'm not the only I'm not the only person in the world. I have to understand the world. And the, the, to understand life. Or like, to understand God. Right, guys? Like yeah, like Ryan just said, it's it's all about change and evolution and growth. Don't be afraid of that. No, God people doesn't want are us scared. To kill, God doesn't want us to kill nobody. God doesn't want us to kill animals. You know, if that's the God we believe in, yeah. you know, I believe any kind of killer, any kind, any kind of humans, animals, is a form of self hate. That's just my belief. Yeah, and then. You know, you need a little protein because you got fights coming up. So, you know, there's no. I've I've eaten I've eaten fake meat during my fight. Somebody offered you know? me that to do like a deal well, with fake meat and stuff like that. I don't that's know the that's the that's the future. Good. That's the future. You still feel strong? Yeah, I still feel strong too. But listen, um, it's gonna soon be blasphemous to eat um, meat animals. Possibly attack yeah. animals. You see how powerful their um their network is now. Yeah. Imagine 20 years from now. True. It's already we'll all be eating, we're going to all be eating. Um, and it's not processed meat, but it's, um, it's not real meat. Yeah. And just as healthy for you, probably more healthy. Yeah, they have, they have to figure it out because I've been dabbling in that for a while. And they so, got to get it right. I mean, I mean, yeah, because yeah. you you, suddenly you look, what is in the impossible? Because I, burger? I would listen. Yeah. No, oh, wait a minute, there's I was, more sodium I was, than. I was in my, um, my refrigerator. Yesterday, and I, and I took a piece and I ate, and I said, wow, that's impossible. I guess tell right away it was impossible. <laughs> My whole family got that down. They don't eat no meat. Nothing. Yeah. This, is, this has been heavy, right? It's been a good moment, I feel like. No, but listen, um, this is only, he's a Leo, so he's not like most people. Leo absorbs everything mm -hmm. for their leadership. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Leo's and the uh, Capricorns are just the fucking obnoxious motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> the he, that cat the Capricorn because he's always on the top, nobody can get him and shit. He's I'm arrogant. a Leo, but my rising is cancer. That's why I yeah. can identify with your sensitiveness. See, you do good. kind of seem sensitive. Yeah. Now he don't want to admit it though. <laughs> what are you talking about? And your sensitivity. I, I don't I don't hide from the truth. I'm now, when I played Karen Carpenter, you said, ugh, that's too sensitive. I didn't say I'm too... Oh, no, I'm like, I'm no, I said... I said... Man, what did you say? Come uh, on, no, tell no, me. Hold, cause I, I, I know what you said. <laughs> I, you're too sensitive, Mike. That's too sensitive for me. Rob. No. Didn't he say that? Karen Carpenter was too fucking sensitive to him. I said, I didn't realize you were this sensitive. Oh. And may I don't know. It wasn't I'm, my sensitivity. It's just powerful music. Yes, the words absolutely. Are powerful. Yeah. I want to listen to that music. Is it good? Karen, uh, listen. Can I tell you something? Um, music educates people. Mm. You know, there's something like my my father-in-law. He um, he can listen to jazz. There's no words, but he knows the words to it. And there's no words ever written to it. Mm. Yeah, jazz is just cold. It's just I love it's soul just, jazz. It's just so that. beyond my content. Oh, it's cold, though. It's cold. I mean, it's you think cold. about jazz. Jazz is, is, is improvisation. Yeah. But everyone's on the same page, and they exactly. know the rules. Yeah. And it's like boxing. You're in there, you've got all the tools, jazz, and then you have to listen, improvise. My dad jazz went to school for piano jazz yeah. playing. Jazz is deep and powerful. Yeah. You know, once you're in that, it's only those, those guys only stick together. Those guys are on the same level. Music you know? is so powerful. What, I mean, think about it. You have to choose your walkout song. You know, to connect exactly. to. Exactly. Yeah, I've, exactly. I've gone through only now two walkout songs that are without, you know, kind of that powerful feeling I felt in them. Mm -hmm. The first one was Superstar from Lupe Fiasco. If you are what you say you are a superstar, then have no fear. If I'm what I say I am, I better step in that ring and not be scared, you know what I mean? That's right. And listen, and, and, right? You know how we go out to our song? And we go, it's been happening since the beginning of human beings. During war, we're going out with our drums, oh, yeah, so whatever it is, the mice, whatever it is. Do, 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 do. In the beginning of time, our war drums. Yeah, that's our right. war, yeah, war it's music. It's been happening forever. Since human beings. 
Hey, yeah. that's yeah, that's crazy. Because we have this visceral connection. And I just started thinking that connection to that yeah. music. You know yes. what I mean? That music does something to you. It's yeah. spiritual. It's spiritual. Spiritual. Yeah, it's spiritual for sure. One hundred percent spiritual. Did, wasn't happy. there a time, Mike, where you were walking out to like a single note or what? what, what, what? No. Um. Sometimes when I was fighting God, I just walk out with um funeral music. <laughs> <laughs> No way. Oh, my God. But you felt that, right? That's uh, something you felt. Yeah, you... I was a dark person back then. Yeah. Man, you are You chose some... to play funeral music. Yeah, I was dark. Because you... Listen, just like I put my whole life into the, the world seeing this thing. I put my whole life into this. Yeah. Yeah, and so, and, and, and I didn't like the, um, I didn't like the fucking reflection <laughs> I got back. The funeral music. Yeah, I'm, so I'm changed, now, but now I you have a better picture. relationship yeah. with all this. Well, absolutely. It's fun. Absolutely. Life is a comedy now. Yes, and you learn not to, you know, you keep your personal life to yourself. Learn that. You know, I didn't have discipline. I was young. I didn't have discipline. I didn't kill for it. I didn't think I was going to live this long. Mm. Then my wife explained, hey, you got, you're got, going to have grandkids through, and they're going to look at you in a certain way, so you need to tr change your life and stuff. And then it just started working. I, I met Rob, and then I did the toes. See, that, that's since I did the toes, and yeah. my whole life changed. I heard of all that your time. Yeah, I I, I've seen every podcast of yours. So. Yeah, I did the toes, and I got a podcast. <laughs> I was on the park. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. Look, this is, I don't know. I don't even think, but it's magical. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's from the, I don't know what happened. I did the toes, and my fucking life changed. I lost 100 pounds. I just fought somebody. Yeah. Right. That was, that was right. Isn't that a trip? Props to you though. That you still Made look strong. Millions and millions of dollars. Just I'm fucking fifty four, <laughs> and I, you know what the fuck am I doing? The biggest show of right. two thousand and two. What am I doing? Where, if this this doesn't have nothing to do with my ego. This is just me. Well, you're just some playing. Kind of grateful. Shit, huh? Are you grateful for that? I am totally. I never knew what yeah. gratitude was mm -hmm. until I, to this, to right. this moment. You know, man, this one, what the, who the fuck I think I am to be fighting people and making money with everybody starving You're right just now. like, thank you, you know? though. I'm just very grateful I used to mm. give it away, yeah. you know? I'm not, I've always been selfish. Anytime I did something for somebody, it was only for my self-aggrandizement. Mm. I was getting something down the road from it. Damn. I never knew the power of just being kind and giving. You know, I, had to, I only used it for my, I knew I only used it for myself and endowment, but you know, just to be actually caring for somebody, I never really knew that. They like, not want anything back. I never experienced that, and that was powerful. Yeah, mm. unconditional love. Oh, absolutely. I'm so selfish. You know, I never know what it's like to be selfless. Well, but you're also very open and transparent, and and raw and real, right. and people gravitate towards that. In a time when everyone's on their best behavior, yeah. you're saying, "This is me." I'm flawed. I'm trying to, to evolve and be the best person I can be. Well, we're all flawed. Though. Some people hide their flaw, and it's really good. Man. You know, but we're all flawed, and it's just that I don't have the energy to hide anything. You know, I don't have anything. Um, eventually, I don't know when I'm going to die. So why am I going to use all that energy hiding something, what I'm really, I was made to be. There's, there's God. God made me this way, mm. I guess. He made you that way. This is our personality that we got from God. And that's the yeah. double-end sword of social media. Yeah. Social media made you not want to show your real self, only the best parts of you. You know what I mean? I think, you know, the moment you start just being like transparent, like you said, transparent, real, just this is me. I'm going to, every day I'm going to work to become better and better and just be that better person the next day. I, people have to respect that because if you yeah. don't, then you're going to be just denying yourself because yourself is like that too nobody's perfect nobody there's it's impossible you're not you're just not you're, you're running into a hole you're running into a brick wall when you get old i was the same way this guy i was just so much vest but then you got to realize this country is a, a country for um entrepreneurs exactly. we survive if you're not an entrepreneur you're not really going to survive in this status that you're accustomed to mm. you know this this whole um whole world is a business it's one big School, so to be the business school as well. Yeah, it's just you know, are you where you gonna make your claim at? You have to prepare for your future. You know, you're not gonna fight forever. I know it feels like it is, but you ain't gonna fight forever. You might wake up tomorrow. It's never fighting the way you might wake up tomorrow. I don't want to do this shit no more. I don't want to give this big percentage to these motherfuckers all my life. Hey, before every fight, I'm like. 
damn, this shit sucks. <laughs> no, so I have a love hate relationship with this Listen, sport. Listen, I know, and he's only twenty two, but how long you been doing it? Since I was seven. <laughs> See. And even the amateurs That's, fights, those it felt like professional fights. Those are the toughest. Yeah. The amateurs are tougher than the pro fights, yeah, right? Yeah, no, 100%. 100 rounds of hell, huh? No, why, why, though? That's huh? weird, right? Because why, it's, why? Us, it's us developing as professionals. Mm -hmm. If for some reason, man, those fights were like the scariest thing in the world. I know, but listen, I wasn't a great amateur. You know, I won like one phony kind of because the, 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 all the Russian guys didn't mm -hmm. go there. But the real deal is that once I got 18, I just, boom, it just happens. Without you even thinking, you start worrying, you start getting better, boom. That's what happened right? to me. I don't know Yo, either. Why, why, <laughs> How does that working? even make sense? I wasn't then? a great amateur, but sometimes I turned pro knocking these I mean, I, I, I mean, I did pretty good, like I said, in the amateurs. I yeah, know, right, I, media, but, but yeah. as a pro, that shit just started going fast. Once I had 15 I, yeah. fights in one year. Yeah, but Mike, you were thrown into the deep, I want to hear about your story. You were thrown into the deep end of the pool you were lying about your age from the jump. Yeah. So you were a kid. You weren't even old enough to fight these men. And you were, and so you got thrown into the deep end of the pool. You had to evolve See, my fast. mentor, he comes from the old school. He means he thinks you should fight as many fights as you can as an amateur. Don't care if you lose or win right. because you, you have that experience so it won't happen in the pros. Exactly. You know, it's no matter how many times you lose. I've been knocked out in the amateurs. I've been beating the amateurs. Then I turn pro. I'm fucking invincible. You know, right. it's just like you said. Right? It's just some sudden, the sudden switch, and it's, it's beyond you. Right. You're the same guy, but you're not the same and guy. Something also happened to me you when know? I was 17 before I went pro. I went through this just anxiety, panic attack that I never, like you know, I never experienced. Yeah, I had that stuff too. Yeah, and it was right before I went pro, and you know. To me, now looking back at it, obviously, I feel like it, it, it taught me to, you know, learn about myself. And it's the start of my, my spiritual growth, the start of my just knowing myself better and right. just an understanding of who I am and who I can be. And, you know, and I just going through that experience comes back to like, I want to tell kids like when you're feeling these feelings, like it's, it may feel like it'll never end, but it's going to teach you a lot. And I want kids to know that it. You'll be you'll be okay because yeah. some kids won't even notice what it is right. because you know you you don't ask those type of questions or you think that you know you're too tough to not feel you know scared or not feel like can't breathe you know there's so much things anxiety can make you feel like but you're not alone and people are here just talk to somebody ask some questions somebody has been through it promise you that and you're gonna be okay I promise you and just know that that feeling will pass. And you mentioned breath. It's about breathing. It all comes from the breath. Because that panic attack is about the shortness of breath. Exactly. And Especially if you don't know what's going on. You, you're going <laughs> to... But unknown. if you do know, you're just... You'll pass. You're go. Well, I knew what was going on. I was getting ready to go in there and fight another human being. I was scared to death. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then, you start, then I realized this. This is what I found out. Then the whole game changed. I found out... They're more afraid of me than I am of them. And then everything changed. It's going to bow. <laughs> Motherfucker. I'm going to fucking kill you. I was, I was out there back then. That yeah. gave you a different perspective. Different perspective. I was threatening them before the fight, threatening the mothers, the family, just <laughs> act like a savage. Oh, my God. Yeah, the things just, you said. I was, somebody would shake my, get the fuck out of me. I'm shaking your fucking hand. And that's the only thing I regret. That's mm. the only stuff I regret. I wish mm. I could have. I wanted to talk like a human being to those mm. people. But in order to be what I wanted to do, I had to be a savage. That yeah. was your way. Yeah, that's what I knew. You know, some guys are just, like Alexis Aguayo, he's a gentleman the whole way before yeah. he kills you. Yeah. No, he's a monster. He's going to kill you. He's going to fucking kill you, but he's going to kiss you, hold you, <laughs> yeah, right. and be nice. He talks about how great your family and your, fa yeah, you know, yeah. your father is. And he's going to go through a long intellectual love story with you after he kills you. Right. You know. But I've right. seen you in the ring after you've knocked someone out. You hugged them. You well, I learned kiss. that from him. Okay. Yeah. You know, I learned that. that from him. Interesting. Like him, like he sees them. I stayed with my heroes, Duran and Ali and all mm. those. See, Ali, we just left. But Ali inspired me because I was in a reform school and they played the movie The Greatest and Ali came in. And right away I said, I want to be like him. Mm. And then I got transferred to another place. And at this other place, it was a gentleman named Bobby Stewart who used to be a boxer. And I said, hey, can you train me with you? And he said, no, I'm not training you. Everybody wants to be a fighter. You get your grades up and you start acting like you got some sense and I'll think about it. And so I got, my, I got on the honor roll and, was, and he started teaching me. 
And then one day he had um he had a little bit of a like a broken nose black eye and he was mad one day and I thought he was mad but he was mad because his wife was angry and said, I don't want you to box no more of your nose. And then he said, don't worry, I'm going to take you somewhere else. And this guy's going to take you to the next level. And that's how I met Cuss. Wow. All from, from Ali. That's yeah, crazy. all from Ali. Isn't all from fuck. And then I avenged him with, uh, with fucking Trevor Burbick and Larry Holmes. <laughs> Can you believe that? I, just, yeah. I, I avenged him. Man, yeah. nobody. Before that yeah. fight, did you have that feeling that you could avenge him? Was it like... That was my mission. Mm. It's my mission to knock out Tank in two rounds. Oh, I know. Foo. So you know what's happening. Tank, you hear this shit, man? You know, man. <laughs> you got to represent Baltimore, man. They're going to think bad about you. No, you he's still going to be a hero. Not if, he, not if he doesn't fight you. You got to fight me. Oh, he got to fight me, yeah. You, know. you talking mad shit. You know. I ain't hear shit like this in Ali. You're really embarrassing people in front of Baltimore. Say, you're going to still be cool and shit. Tank, man, what the fuck? I mean, think of, think about from from this perspective. People saying he's not ready for tank. Mm -hmm. He went from proving it, knocking Luke out. It's a legit, right? Olympic and by the way, you had love for him afterwards. Always. You took a page out of Mike's book, mm -hmm. which is great. And now, not only are you stepping up, calling him out, but you're calling out the round. You know, this is what all fighters, especially these young guys, they should learn. We're all entrepreneurs. We're just not fighters. We're not going to have fight a fight. We're going to talk and say, listen, this is the most money that both of us are going to make the whole year, probably five years from now. Let's fight. And matter of fact, let's get this guy out of it. And this, we don't need this guy. And we keep more, most of that money to ourselves. Yeah. Okay? Sometimes you got to tell your friend, hey, just chill out for a minute. I'll break you off, but you're not going to get this. We're going to decide how this money's going to be split before I decide to look out for anybody else. Right. You feel me, right? Yeah, totally. I, but, just, but listen, guys like me and him at this age, sometimes we're afraid to confront our guys. You know, you know what I mean? We don't know. We're not afraid of nobody in the ring, but we're afraid to confront these guys. Ain't that something? All yeah. these bad guys, we kick their asses, and we don't want to confront these bitch niggas. And that bitch, you know what I mean? They want to do that to your money. Yeah. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Especially if they're taking advantage. They should all know this is, this is a money cow right now. Right. You know what I mean? We're making money. We're slave masters. You know, my, I'm the only slave master that don't have no contract with anybody. The legends don't. I don't want to own nobody. Mm. We just do business. Well, I mean, Mike, before you beat yourself up, the reality is to get to the level that you guys are at, you have to be so singularly oh, focused. And then you see this guy. Well, he must know what he's doing about. He's dealing with finance. I don't know finances. I've been, I, I've been grinding so hard. So you do feel a bit subservient to them. Yes, but listen, know what finance is? Forget everybody else or you, and just have a trainer and a lawyer. That's your life. Mm. A trainer and a lawyer. True. Everybody else is just, even if you do got entrepreneur, yeah, I look at it. I like, some people I love, I want to look. I want them to look like me. You know what I mean? Because we've known each other forever. And this is great for us. But we have, you, you, it's up to you to do it. You know what I mean? Somebody else shouldn't be taking your money. You should have your own checkbook. I don't care. That's what you should have. You're sophisticated. You got fucking kids. I can see if you're a little wild motherfucker. You're out there. Hey, my dick is. No, you got children. Yeah, you I got do. got children. Do. Your whole game got to change. Fuck everybody. Fuck them. Oh, man. Business partner, they fuck you. Let's change this contract, nigga. Can you I got feel babies. he's ready to go right now, man? Mm, right. This guy is ready to fight right now. I can feel it. He's busting out. But we got to be fighters in both arenas. We got to be fighters in entrepreneur. Yeah. And it's like that right? same spirit. That same spirit got to go into entrepreneurship. Are you, are you feeling all this? You I'm know what I'm talking about. I'm soaking you know. it in. I'm just. You have to be your own business. Like me, I'm my own business. You know, man, if anybody I choose to break off and look out, that's because I choose it. Nobody else is going to do it for me. Mm. You got to be your own man. I know it's tough dealing with that at 22 yeah. and stuff, but I just remember the two babies. Listen, that's why I, got I was left with nothing, and I have all these babies. Mm. They don't give a fuck about my babies. They won't care about your babies. It's just the real. Yeah. You're a worker. You know what I'm you're, you're, mm. Even though you're a savage in the ring, but you're a bitch in business, people own you. True. No, don't feel bad. It happened to me, too. Do not feel bad. It happened to the greatest ever. Yeah. And you're never too old to learn. No, ever. Never, ever. 
You have to face your own fear. Once you face your fears, you'll face anybody. You know, this is what I learned. Anybody that you fight is not your anybody, your enemy, and anybody that help you is not your friend. Yeah. Remember that, young man. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate you. This has been amazing, you guys. Well, it's cool hanging out with you too, motherfucker. Look I'm, I'm loving I it. I know, Jeremy. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm soaking it all up. Yeah, was, hey, listen, I, I've worked with him before. My little boy Miguel. Yeah. Miguel is what eighteen now. Mm. Wow, he's eighteen. He doesn't want any. Listen, this is. I don't know. He must be hanging out with Karl Marx and so cause This guy don't want no. Every time I get me to no dad, I don't need that. I need probably like twenty, a thousand bucks instead of the fucking fifty thousand. Mm. You know, um, he's just. I don't know. He's a missionary. He goes to Haiti and all these countries. That's incredible. I don't know where the fuck he got that shit from. But, I think he got it from you. That's a part of you. He just wants to help the world. Doesn't want every. Doesn't want no fancy car. He got. I had. I gave him a Cadillac truck. He got rid of that. He wants to get this Wrangler shit. And um, he. This is interesting. All my insecurities is never going back there. Never going. Not even. Forget going to Browns. I don't want to go beneath my living. Sp you know, he just, he throws away everything that he has that is of wealth and he just lives yeah. under wealth. Mike, can I ask you a question? What? Just my, because I want to know. Um, if there was anybody you would ever want to fight in history, who would that be? Achilles. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I thought I was going to be a boxer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We, we thought it, you know. You thought it might be possibly George Foreman. You didn't know. Ali. I'm to get as close to God as possible like you, nigga. Yeah, that's true. You got to face these guys. <laughs> if it's not physical, I got to face them emotionally, right. spiritually. Everything, just right there. Exactly. That's what fighting is, fighting in spirit. Yeah. Mm. Not physical, but it's spirit. They turn physical, but it's all spirit. All spirit, right. right? When it comes down to it. Yeah, it's all spirit. All spirit. So why Achilles? Huh? Why Achilles? He's the greatest warrior ever. I mean, I'm, yeah. I, I want to fight. That's fight somebody when you ask the guy you want to fight. That's yeah. the true yeah. test. Yeah. 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 When this is over, I'm going to go to um, Greece and visit his tomb. Oh, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. That I might, might want to go to Greece too. Let's go. There you go. Yeah. I'll document it. Yeah, that'd be so. That'd be so random. Ryan Garcia, you know, Mike like, Tyson, go to Greece. I wanted to know what what was before me. Why am I this way? Why do I think about this cold? And I found out what Gladiator. I found out everything with fighting and all oh, that stuff. Wow. Came around, you know, it was started. Gladiator started during war. They captured mm. guys, so we're bored and say, "Hey, I bet you such and such money that this guy could kill this guy." And oh they, no way. Yeah, and they put them in them fight each other. I didn't even know that. And they say, hey, if you win, I'll give you such and such. But if you lose, you're just dead. So you better win. Yeah. Yeah. The ultimate test. That's the thing. You got to look at the history. eventually, you kill enough people, you win your freedom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. gladiators. And there's really some good. guys that just got so addicted they said, no, they don't want their freedom. Stay there and do it. did it till they died. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. They didn't want their freedom. They just wanted to keep entertaining. Because they were entertaining people. Yeah. The gladiators... The slaves were the most biggest superstars of the whole right, Roman Empire. Right, right. Mm -hmm. True. They were breeding some serious warriors. Listen, like um, they had this Rome there. I must have been. I must have said it yesterday. That it's just like this. This is why we have this. If we learned from the Romans to set up our couches and shit like this, mm -hmm. and they had the whatever mm -hmm. they got high with, they had it there. It was really old. It's like a couple of thousand years old. It was old. And know what else they had? They had a chipping of the fucking gladiator. It's like a box. Like they got the, the fucking chipping of a gladiator on the wall. I don't know his name, but it was oh, the guy that they, they looked up to. <clears throat> it doesn't change. No. You know? Nothing changed. We learned all that from them. All this stuff. Exactly. Right. <clears throat> and you know that, that the spirit will go from body to body. It's Listen, my wife thinks I'm, no, my wife doesn't think I'm too nice. I believe this personality we have, once we die, it goes somewhere else. Absolutely. Somebody else gets it. Then somebody else gets see it. See what they do with it. I so mean, somebody, maybe our children, maybe, but somebody else gets the spirit. I think there's a reason why you're so fascinated with Achilles. There's a reason subconsciously, you know, we don't know if that spirit entered your bodies, our bodies. We don't know. 
I, I would have to say that it's a high we probability. Got that, we got you that know, spirit you know of happened? Alexander the Great. We got, you know what I mean? Yeah, we got exactly. that spirit. But listen, when you think about it, listen, I know it's weird because when you think about the bloodline, it goes all the way to America. It comes every, his bloodline was in everybody. He conquered everybody. The Romans, everybody. Because yeah. once the Romans conquered the, conquered the Greeks, they interbred with the Alexander bloodline is in Af Afghanistan. That's what mm. they. That's why they look the way they look. All that bushy hair. That's how Alexander looked. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, think about it. You can't explain why you guys, at a certain point, took the boxing the way you did, the way you embraced that gladiator mm. spirit. You know what I mean? Like, there's some things that are unexplained. Yes, you worked your asses off, but there are other variables that are unexplained with spirits. Yeah. I think about like when I was a little kid, people used to pick on me. Can you imagine? You would never think that. Same here, but yeah. You know, people used to kick my f I mean, do whatever they wanted to me. Mm -hmm. And just think that I would turn out this way. Yeah. When you I mean? was a kid, I was scared of confrontation. Like, they could tell oh, me nigga, whatever. I used, to, I used to wear glasses. Yeah. And that's why I never wore glasses. Somebody took my glasses and they put it in the fucking truck, like the milk truck. Yeah. Put it in the gas tank. One time I was a kid, they put me in a garage. <laughs> they hung up, like they hung like a knife around my, like over my face, and I was just like so scared. I, I just couldn't do it. All I would say is let's box. Right. <laughs> but I mean, I was so scared though. I, I I wouldn't want. I wouldn't even dare think about street fighting. Like, I would have to be forced to fight. Well, that's a peep game now. Those same people would kill somebody for me. Exactly. <laughs> because oh, of who man. I became and them same that, people that, that bullied me. That's a part of your journey. Yeah. That's what ignited your spirit. Just like I bet you those guys if they're still around. Oh man, they'll write me and blow. All your boys are down with you, none guys. Same guys that were, even they didn't, but these are the same kind that would have picked on me because I became that guy then. Right. You know, you it doesn't stop. You have to become them because they get that love. Even without you knowing it. Even though you didn't do any crimes with them or nothing, like, you become them. That's the only way they show you love. They feel that you're a part of them. Even though you don't do crime with them, they just feel that you're a part of them. Mm. That's why they really, you know, and some, it's weird because there's some people, just, they want something to fight for, like what he's talking about. He want people to, some people want somebody like that to fight for. They have energy, they're out there killing people, killing them. They want somebody to fight. They want to do the right thing. Right. But all they know how to do is fight, but they, how do they put that in the right direction? Right. And I'm not talking about that. never going to be fighters. These are real tough guys. Boxing's not for tough guys. You know, tough guys for the street, but these are real tough guys. So, you know, they want to be behind somebody like that because they see positivity in him and right. they think that shit could rub off on them. It's really crazy about these street guys. It's a lot. They There's want to change their life and they yeah. believe they could change it to somebody who's from the neighborhood that changed their life. Mm. I mean, look at Manny Pacquiao. Came from the, the you know, the... Literally the dirtiest poor you could in Philippines. And, and not, they're not going to be fighters, but just being associated with him and watching them succeed, they become entrepreneurs and they become mm. successful in another way. I can't even imagine how many people Manny yeah. Pacquiao inspired in the Philippines. From Then they're coming from nothing. I mean, to me, that's like, whew. If anybody I could get in the ring with, before I go, is Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, and just to be in the ring with them, I wouldn't even... You hear me talking like what I talk with Tank. I, I couldn't even do that with Manny. I just let's fight because Dig. you know that's Manny's spirit. But Dig, this is the thing about fighting. You know what your job is in fighting when you're a professional fighter? To beat your hero. Mm. You just put it out there. That, I think Manny it. heard you. you I think he'd be honored your, to get in the ring. You have with to you. beat your hero. Yeah, it's yeah, gonna be painful, but that's when you know you. I would probably try you're, saying, you're saying he has to be Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. I beat my hero, Larry Holmes. Oh, yes, yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. But you also beat him for Ali. Uh, yeah, but he was still a great man. Yeah. You know, I said, I know fighting. I don't care anybody say he's Ali duplicate. He's great. He, he got up off the floor a lot of times. Yes, he did. He did. With some really scary people. Did, did Ali whisper something to you when you were in the ring? Yeah, get him for me. Get him for me. What did that feel like, to have Ali say that Man, to you? Man. I don't know. I, used, I had a really dark... I was just a dark person back then. I used, all I knew was about hurting people. Can you imagine that? That was my whole goal in life at the time. Because I wanted love. All, all this stuff, everything we do in life, this, all this is for love. Even yes. fighting, knowing that this guy has my back. All this is love. Everything's love, violence, everything comes from love. You wanted Ali to love you, and uh, when he said that to you, didn't it 
No, um, wanted to, I wanted him to respect, respect me yes. as a peer. Yes. Right. Yeah. And he gave you your marching orders. Yeah, but even then, I just always, um, I just always knew he was the greatest. Even though I don't know anybody to tell that crazy stuff. I always knew he was the greatest. Yeah. Because the greatest, he, you know, well, how can I be better than him? He inspired me. He made me. Yeah. How can I be greater? Really? But that's, that's humble. That's respect. That's perspective. And that's one of the reasons why we, we're gravitating towards you. You, don't, you may not understand that, but part of it. I don't know. Fighting is deep. It's so emotional. It's the most emotional thing in the world. That's why I love it, but then I hate it, but then I love it. And then I hate it. <laughs> no, if you if you um, if you don't have those feelings, then you're nothing. You you're dealing with life. You're feeling. You're dealing with feelings. And everything. You know. You think you really hate it, but that hate is love, because you think you hate it. Because if you really hated it, you would still be where you started. You loved it so much. You just loved that camera so much. You'd die for it. It makes you powerful. That's it. it's powerful, but that's what it does. It's a drug. Yeah. I'll yes, die yes, to inspire yes, people. Yes, yes. Live, you have, listen, you could die for people. You have people to live for. You have to live for your children. That's true. You know. So I better work my ass off. Yeah, it's all about that. You need to die for them. You know. That's how selfishness. You want all the love. I know I deal with it too. My yeah. kids check me too because I have smart kids. Yeah. And they check me, so I have to come. To, I have to be humble too. Cause they, my dad, one day she's twelve. She thinks I'm a god complex, ego maniac. And then I have to say, you know, I have to be this way because some people broke me down and beat me down. So I have to believe them something. She doesn't see that. She goes through a philosophical. She reads books and stuff. Mm. She doesn't know what life is. Life is not a book. Life is life. Exactly. That's yeah, and you can't get it from no books. You mm -hmm. deal with life. It's life. My kids live a great life, but they don't know what I did, where I come from, where it all comes from. They think we were born like this. They have no idea. They think we were born like this. Yeah. They don't know this comes from the gutter. You know, it, they're, they're there to keep you humble, man. I remember talking to Bruce Springsteen, yes. and he told me that his kids don't think that he's cool. And your kids may not think you're cool, man, but that's part of it. You know what I mean? It's part of and listen, the dynamics I know, I know, of it all. I know Bruce knows it, but that bothers us. I know it does. Everybody, mm. we can make everybody else jump, but not these guys. Yeah, my, Keeps you humble. You know, yeah. they humble. My, daughter, <laughs> my daughter Riley, she don't care if I'm on TV, nothing. You know, my <laughs> ego did listen, Ryan. Check it out. This is my ego. I went to my daughter. My daughter's 12, but she was 11 at the time. I said, baby, how does it feel to be with, how does it feel that your father's the greatest fighter since the conception of God? She went like this. I don't know. He is dead. I don't know. <laughs> and I know it bothered me. But I said, "Damn, am I really all this shit that I did? I'm just dead." <laughs> you know what I said? <laughs> something I did. I'm just dead. And you that's know what? what I, that's yeah. what humbles you. It's just beautiful. Dead. It's a beautiful because even me, like people always, you know, want to hug me or whatever, you know, like and just a little thing where I want to hug my daughter and she pushes me away and d doesn't care. I'm like, that makes me feel like. Oh my gosh! Like it's, it's like, you know what I mean. It's like a very it's no, but even those gonna, little things are when like. When you get older, you gonna understand this. Um, everybody kid in the world will listen to you, but yours. Damn. You know what I mean, isn't it's, that it, something? It's somehow, yeah. What is that? Everybody in the world wants to come. Hey, tell me something. Inspire me. Your kid look at you. Yeah, Dan, go right back in the room. Get some food from the fridge. They go in the room. Close yeah. the door. Because you're. It's the balance of the universe, but they're closest to you. You know, so they may subconsciously take it for granted. No. And they don't have the perspective, no? They see my flaws. The people mm. out there don't see my flaws. They see me arguing with their mother. Oh, he's not really a nice guy. Like, he's smiling at everybody, hugging everybody. He's not really that guy. That bothers the kids. Oh, why are these people, he loves these people more than he loves us? Mm. How come my kids don't treat me like everybody else's kids do? Because they see things at home that these kids don't see. Mm. I'm not that cool guy at home as I am outside in the public. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when I come home, the kids are like, fuck. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> My wife has to tell them, no, go over and hug your dad. Just kiss your dad. Tell your dad yeah. you love them. Yeah. They don't know I hear that stuff. They don't know I know mom does that. Mm. Go hug your dad. Go see <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, man. Woo. Listen, we all have many sides and we're all Ooh. flawed. We have many dimensions. And I was just told to do this, and I hate. I want to talk forever with you guys, 
we need to come back and do this again. Like I said, oh, after the, the fight, the second round, yeah. we only want to call a fight. It's two rounds, and so. maybe even go to Greece. We don't know. We could do yeah, a lot. Possible. We need to have somebody right here to combat you or somebody. Let's go, man. God, this guy's so awesome. He's right? great. Inspiring, People have man. so many views from this guy. I didn't know this guy was like that. Fucking Ricky yeah. Ricardo in boxing shorts. <laughs> Ricky Ricardo. <laughs> I say that because you're so entertaining. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, man. We, we're, we're in you your corner, man. You look good. Your style. You look good. Yeah, he Thank cares. Look, he puts yeah, it together. Yeah. Consciousness of the appearance. Yeah, mm. man. We're proud of you, and we're in your corner. There it is. Let's do it. Thank you guys for listening. Right, baby. Greatest of all time. Woo! Future greatest of all time. Hank, King come on, Ryan. Tank. You better get out here, Tank, man. Let's go. Rawr! King Ryan Garcia in two. We're out.